Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to really have fun making a simple card that you can mass produce, in my opinion. And I'll show you ways that you could probably make this even simpler within the tutorial, but I have a feeling this is gonna be super simple with stunning results, so let's go ahead and get started. I have a little heart embossing folder. I cannot remember where I purchased this. I'll be sure to link everything that I'm using down below, so I'll do my best to try and find something similar for you, but this is so cute and will just give a nice subtle background to this design on this card. I also have this paper pad called Homemade. It's so pretty and I was really thinking it'd be fun to showcase a real fun gingham and that would be, I think this one. Is that the one I want to use? I think that's super fun. But let's go ahead and just have a little eye candy. Isn't this adorable? It's so, so fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. I also have a really fun Love You die, and it has a nice shadow layer, plus it has the little Love You letters. I really think this is gonna be really cute, and I'm going to use this with my pattern paper as well. I'll be bringing in a few other things throughout this video, so always utilize the description box below so that you can get an entire list of things that you will need if you wanna recreate this look. I think that's the gingham I wanna go with, but I'm gonna double check that there isn't anything else that I would like. I think this is it. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this really pretty pink just like this, set this to the side, and then let's start by doing some embossing on our panel. So I'm gonna grab an A2 size panel to get started with. I always keep all of my panels trimmed down. I have a little paper trimming party for one with myself and Gilmore Girls, and we just get all the paper ready to go. That way when I have a second to create, I can just come down here really quickly and everything's all ready to go. So A2 is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm I'm gonna further trim this down a little bit before I do my embossing. And I'm doing that because I don't want to send my beautiful embossed panel through the paper trimmer or the die cutting machine after it has been embossed because I don't wanna ruin that beautiful raised effect. So let me grab my mini paper trimmer and we'll get this all prepped. Okay, so again, original size is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm going to simply just take a quarter of an inch on each or off of each side. So that leaves me at four by, let's see, five and a quarter, four by five and a quarter. And that will just give me a nice trim down panel for my final look. Now I'm going to take this, put it in my embossing folder, just like this. And I'm gonna run this through my spell binders really quickly. I just prefer that machine for my embossing and then we'll go ahead and cross this first little task off our list. Okay. And it's always just finding the ideal sandwich for the embossing folder that you have because all embossing folders are so different, but that little sandwich worked for me this time. Okay, let me put this away and let's reveal our really pretty panel, okay? Now I can open this up. Oh, how cute is this? So pretty. I love that. It's just subtle, simple, and I like it because it's going to be something, but it's not gonna steal the show. It's just going to be beautiful, beautiful support towards our main design. Okay, so I'm going to use this pattern paper to do my love you. Now you could do so many different techniques to bring some color to your project, but if you wanna make this quick and simple, and if you're thinking about mass producing cards, pattern paper is a wonderful thing that you can do because the pattern and the color is already there for you, and all you have to do is cut it out. So let me go ahead and trim out just the little bit that I need. I'm also going to probably cut out an additional couple layers on some 80 pound cardstock. That way I can build this up really nicely and get it nice and chunky. All right, let's grab the cutting plates and send this through. Okay, my cutting plates are getting so, so loved lately. <laughs> as I am just infatuated with this project. Now, because there are some definitive lines on this pattern paper, I'm going to grab some tape and I'm gonna try my best to line this up as best that I can, just so that the lines of the gingham run 
perfectly perpendicular with the line of my die. So let's see how, let's see how I did with that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you can take a moment to pause, that would probably be worth it. Okay, let's see how that turned out. Bring that out. Oh, so cute. And yes, the moment taken to just line, line that paper up, isn't that pretty? That's really pretty. Okay, I do have some just scrap cardstock here. Scrap 80 pound. I always keep just all my little snippets because now I can use that two times to do a little build up for this. I think that's a subtle way to make it nice. I did promise though to give tips on how to make this even simpler and to keep this simple, you can just skip this step. This, I have a little bit more time and I really like the look of really, really stacking it up. So I'm gonna do that. But if you don't have the time and you're wanting to make, you know, a dozen of these, go ahead and skip this step and the card will be equally as beautiful. Okay, I went ahead and Oh, just barely made it. <laughs> I used every tiny piece and portion of that paper. I went ahead and cut out my shadow layer three additional times on 80 pound cardstock. I like to build that up as well, but quick tip, keeping it short and sweet, you can just cut that out one time. Okay, putting my plates away, I believe I'm done with my die cutting for now, but I am going to next take some glue and I'm just going to simply, actually I might even do tape runner. Might as well, I'm gonna do some tape runner because this is nice big pieces. And I'm just gonna stack my die cut. Now, I guess I am, I'm almost regretting this because tape runner's not gonna give me the wiggle room that I may need to keep this all lined up. So, let me pause and pray. And maybe I can do that. Okay, actually, actually not too bad. Okay, dare I attempt it a second time? Might as well. Might as well. <clears throat> okay. Could also probably add a little bit of glue just to kind of give it some, some um, liquid movement, but I think I can do this. Famous last words, but there we go. Oh, not too bad, I impressed myself there. Okay, let me put my dies to the side so that I don't lose those. But now I have three stacked layers and that looks really, really nice. So let's do the same. This time I will use liquid glue and I'm gonna pop out the couple places that I missed here. Okay, and reserving our pattern, of course, for the top layer. I will just stack all of these up. How are you doing with your Valentines? Are you creating by hand this year? I hope you are because it's a nice way to slow down. And I do think that this is a pretty simple card to do, you know, a dozen, half a dozen. Super easy. Now, when doing stuff like this, what I find is best is to work in like an assembly line, right? So start off and emboss all of your panels at one time, get all of that done. Then do all of your die cutting at one time, give yourself all your little piles, then do all of your gluing at once. That way you're not stopping and thinking about what your next step needs to be. You're just focusing on one task at a time. And then at the end, you are just building your cards. So I find that that's really fun and easy. If you want a video on how I made all of my son's stamped birthday cards, I'll show you the exact process and kind of how to do an assembly line like that. And I'll link that video up right in the corner for you because it's really gratifying to watch. It was also really gratifying to complete as well, but it's really easy once you just make a good system out of it. Okay, so two layers of that 80 pound cardstock underneath just to bring that, pop it up a little bit and bring it to life. And that looks really nice too. Okay, so now we can just place this on our little shadow layer. Oh, so fun. Go ahead and add some glue there. And then we are going to quickly finish this card. This one's very, very simple, but simply stunning as I like to think. Okay. 
liquid glue would be the best for this part because then you can lay it down, kind of shift it into place, just like that. I'll grab a little block and set that to the side for a moment while I prep my cart base. My cart base is going to be created out of 110 pound cardstock, and that is going to be sized at 11 inches by four and a quarter. Half of 11 is five and a half, so that's where I'm going to place my score line. And then I'll have my little top folding card, which is so cute. Okay, grabbing my score tool, press that down really nicely. And now I'll grab a foam tape and place my little panel right on there. In fact, I'm going to turn that over and do this side. Okay, turning this around, grabbing my non-stick scissors. And I love, this is my favorite part. I don't know why. I don't know why. But the foam tape on the panel like my kids say pop it up <laughs> they say pop it up they're enjoying card making as well and everyone has their favorite point in the project let me know what yours your favorite part in your card making project is I think I asked that before and I got the best response responses I think someone said when it's in the envelope or so <laughs> maybe I'm making that up I can't remember but it was hilarious which you know for some cards maybe that definitely is once it's done, it's the favorite part. Okay, I love that. It just flattens it out so nicely. Isn't that pretty? That is so pretty. Okay, keeping that there actually, we'll bring this in and we're just gonna place that right on the card. Now I need to decide if I want to do a sub sentiment. Okay, I have been using this Simple Sentiments stamp set by Kathy Zilski like crazy. I think everybody needs this literally pause and go add this to your cart. It is so good. I think, I kind of like text me every day. I think that is so cute. Love you, text me every day. In fact, you could, ooh, what if we kind of put it over? That would be cute. Oh, they're just, everything's so cute. I love the moi. I love you're the coolest. I'm forever on team you. And it's very, very um, universal because we have some birthday things. We have, um, always and forever, which would be so cute for Valentine's Day or an anniversary. You have, um, oh, get my tribe. That is so cute. That's what I'm talking about. I mean, I just love it. I love it. And I have her other one as well. In fact, she designed this die as well. If you don't follow Kathy Zilski on YouTube, you just, I mean, you just need to, you just need to. Okay. I'm going to do text me every day. I think that's super cute. And I think I'll do it with gold because that's just a natural choice to go with this nice warm card. Text me every day. And I'm kind of thinking I might put it here. We'll, we'll play around. We're not going to do anything until it's at least embossed and ready to go. Okay. And as always, for the quick tip on keeping this quicker and simpler, go ahead and either skip the sub sentiment entirely, or you can actually just stamp out your sentiment. That way you're not having to do the whole heat embossing process. So I'm going into a little bit more depth because I have the creative time to slow down and do so. But again, offered several, several fun ways and tips that you could make this even quicker. Okay, using every bit of scrap that I have, I'm gonna place this right inside of my mini Misty. Oh, I need to put, this mini Misty is newer to me, so I don't have my nice washi tape on my magnet like I do on my main Misty or my full size Misty. Actually, I shouldn't call the other one main. This is my main Misty, the mini. I really like the mini. Okay, let's go ahead and prep my paper with the powder, okay, and grab first some mark, go ahead and ink that up a little bit, or glue it up as I like to think, and I'm not going to use my pressure tool because it's just a fine little tiny stamp, 
I will double stamp it, making sure that that stayed right where it needs to. Okay, done. And I have my catch paper. I have my little brush ready to go. And I think that looks good. Time will tell. Sometimes it's hard to see. Okay, I'm gonna use this fine, ultra fine gold from Simon Says Stamp. It has quickly become my favorite because, well, you'll see, it's just way too pretty. Okay, adding my powder. Oh, that did turn out good. Okay, it did. Seems like it's a little bit bolder on one side, but I'm not aiming for perfection. Okay. I'm going to brush off any extra that I have. Okay. And I will pour this right back in and heat up my powder. Okay, grabbing the little hot hands so that my fingers stay nice and safe and cool. And I'm going to heat this up really good and then melt my powder. that is can you see why that's my favorite it's just gorgeous I love it okay now I'm going to do I dare trim this out with a paper trimmer I think I can because I have some right angles here so I think I will attempt it Let's set this to the side so we don't have any oopsies at the last moment and I'm gonna trim this out and I, I kind of want to keep it nice and skinny because of the nature of where I'm thinking of placing it and because well it's a sub sentiment okay Let's see if I did a good job there oh I like that okay and then I'll do the sides I like that this part always stresses me out the foam tape is where it's at for me the trimming of the sentiments I should probably get a good little die for sentiments. I don't think I have one. Very cute. And of course you can do whichever sub sentiment you like, but I think that's so fun. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I actually am really happy with that. So I'm going to put my little scraps to the side, bring my card right back in by little hot hands. And now we can make that creative decision on where we want everything to go. Okay. So that looks great. I was kind of thinking here, but no, I think it's too, I think it's too much. I think I'll put it here. Does that look cute? Do we like it? I could even skinny it up a little bit more and then put it there. Cause I'm kind, I'm kind of liking that idea. I kind of want to layer it, but I think if we, I think we need to trim it down more to make because it's hiding too much of the sentiment. So let me get back to my stressful trimming and I'll see you in two seconds. Okay, I think, I think I did it. Now I'm just going to by hand with my little fine detail scissors, I'll trim the edges because I don't want to take a chance and ruin it at the last second. And I actually think I may have accomplished what I'm going for here. Okay, one and two. Okay, let's see. Yes, I love that. I love that. Okay, place that wherever you'd like. But for me, that is absolutely it. Okay, now let's start with this little bit. I'm going to just use some glue, place this down. And you know, that little sentiment, sub sentiment set, that stamp set I just showed you, I love this. So I'm, I'm aiming obviously right now for a Valentine's Day card, but based on the sub sentiment you use, you could, and of course the patterns you use, you could make this 
so universal using just this design. So bringing this back in, I believe in you. I love that. Um, so very grateful for you. I love, I just, I think it's, I think it's so, you know, we have one card design and you could really make this card for just about any occasion. I love it, especially the subsummit sentiment as well as the pattern paper you use. Um, that's really going to take the card in the direction that it needs to go. Okay, I'm gonna grab tweezers because teeny tiny. And again, you could do your, just a stamped subsentiment and skip all of the heat portion. Oh, did I want to do that? I kind of, do I want the dimension there? I do. Okay. I'm going to wipe it off. Ooh, I am. I want, I want a little bit more dimension there. So I'm just gonna like that. Yeah, that's okay. It's not ruined. Okay. We're good. I'm going to get my skinny foam tape. Okay. In fact, that's going to be the exact size Oh, that's going to be amazing because it's going to give me, in fact, I'm going to put this whole thing on and trim off that way. It, it's actually, it's going to look like it's just built and stacked die or um, yeah, a stacked paper die. So I'm going to grab, oh goodness, maybe I'll do it this way and do it this way. Okay. Lining that up, lining that up. There. Ooh. Okay. On stick scissors. Trim. Place our extras right back there. That's going to be nice. Very intentional. Very intentional. Okay. Taking the back off. And let's see if I can do like this oh I really love it oops sorry about my my head I think right there there we go okay I feel like I want to do a little sequence and then final card Okay, that is the sequins placement. I pulled a couple. I did the Spellbinders pink op, but it was competing too much with the pink I already had. Really, really pretty, but just not for this project. I ended up going with this peach op. Did I call the other one peach op? Oh, this is the pink op and then peach op. Peach op is my go-to far often than not. I just, I just love it. It's so pretty and I think it lends well with the gold embossing powder. So I'm gonna do that. I like... I like it and I also like how it's kind of playing with that Y there and I'm going to place those down and we have our final card. Now, another thing though, to keep this simple is you could skip the sequins, but do you want to, because it's just so, it, I feel like it's so pretty on its own, but I really do think it elevates itself the whole, as a whole card when you add the little shiny bit at the end. I think that's really fun. Not every time, but 99.99 percent of the time. All right, there we go. I think that's really, really fun. I love how this turned out. I have quite a mess from this little simple card surrounding me in my craft space, but I think that this is a really, really fun idea for a simple Valentine's Day card. Again, if you're watching this video at a non-Valentine's Day time of the year, this can easily, easily translate to any type of card, especially given the sub-sentiment you're using. I think that that embossing powder just stole my heart. I think it's so fun. All right, everyone, if you enjoyed this, please be sure to give this a thumbs up. Check out the description box below for any additional looks at any of the things that I use to bring this card together. And I cannot wait to see you in the next video.